Girl here with another vintage haul video from the flea market. Had a really good time yesterday. It was such beautiful weather and I uh, found a lot of fun stuff and very interesting things, some of which I can't really find out much about, but, um, but I bought them anyway and we'll just have to see how they do. Uh, as usual, I will start with the jewelry. Well, I'll show you my rug first. This is my new rug that I'm working on. <laughs> slow going. That is a very slow way to finish rugs. Uh, but anyway, now I'll show you the jewelry. I got this lovely sterling silver and pink mother of pearl ring. And I got that for $7. this really nice chain. Let's see if you can see it. This chain is not marked at all, but it's very heavy and it looks like silver to me. I have not uh, checked it, but by the time I edit this video I will have checked it and I will let you know. But I thought maybe I would keep that because I just love how that chain looks. And um, it was a dollar, so Hard to beat that. I got this pendant. It's abalone. And although it's not marked, I feel like it very well could be sterling silver. Again, I will let you know. Um, but I paid $2.50 for that. And I got this pretty, it's hard to see. It's a brass filigree with blue stones. This is probably 1930s. Nice, interesting little pendant. And that was also $2.50. Um, paid up on this one. This is a sterling silver and turquoise brooch. I paid $25 for that. It's old Mexican silver. Um, it's got an eagle mark. Um, so that helps to date it to probably the 50s or 60s. But um, yeah, no other marks on it. But it's just I just thought it was a really charming piece. I had a a bracelet once that was this same pattern. Um, also got this. This is another piece that is not marked, but I think it might be silver certainly looks like a 1940s piece. It's, if it's not silver, it's probably silver plate, but it's, it's heavy. So we'll see. It'll be fun to test all this silver. Probably should have done it before the video. Uh, got a couple of rings that I really paid up for on these rings, but look at that. Look at the size of that turquoise. Isn't that beautiful? And that's uh, Native American sterling silver. It's a tiny, tiny size. Well, gosh, it's even small for my ring finger, so I know it's tiny, like a size four. Um, so that may be a hard sell. Sometimes a small size is a, a real drawback. I paid 25 for that, though. Just the turquoise is so beautiful, and the workmanship is really nice. And then this one, I paid 20 for this one. Um, it's a uh, mother of pearl. It's also a Native American made. Um, this one has a signature on it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's right inside there. Uh, I've got a bunch more rings. Let's see, all of these were ten a piece from one of my guys that I uh, buy for regularly. He was he's been real good to me lately. He's been. I mean, normally he was selling these type of rings for around 15, especially the bigger ones. But um, he was real nice. He sold me five of them for 10 bucks a piece. So anyway, there's the first one. It's a amethyst cabochon, beautiful color. This is an older ring, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is old. I think it says, I think it says just sterling on the inside or silver. Yeah, it says silver on the inside. So it's that one. And then this is a citrine ring. And these are all sterling silver. I don't know if I said that. Um, this one's just marked 95. 
This is another amethyst ring. And this one is marked. Oh, this has got a bunch of stuff in it. It's got 95 and then a triangle and a trademark sign. This might be one of the trading posts. Uh, the, the Native American trading posts have shops and some of them have their own trademarks. And I think that might be one of those. I'll have to look it up. Don't know. This is pretty. This is, um, I think that this is, I don't know what this stone is. I should have asked him. I think it's probably quartz. It's pretty clear. But um, nice silver work on that with the leaves and everything. This one is just marked 925. And then this is a, another citrine ring. Some nice big stones on that one. It's got a lot of silver in it. This one is marked 925. So, uh, okay, that's it for the uh, silver rings. I got this bracelet, which is just kind of fun. It's all these different polished stones. I've had similar items to this in the past that sold pretty quickly, so I just like stuff like that. And I only paid, um, oh, it's two or three dollars for that. And this is a 1940s gold filled. It's sterling silver with gold plating. And I paid ten for that. That's a nice one. That. And last piece of jewelry, yep, last piece of jewelry. Um, this is also a sterling silver pen. It's got some very interesting striped rhinestones. This is just something I have never seen before. And it is marked sterling on the back. So, really don't know anything about that. This is cool. But I paid $10 for that. Uh, okay, so that's it for the jewelry. And I'll show you what I was storing the jewelry in. This is a really interesting piece. It's a carved wooden box. And it's definitely Art Nouveau. Unfortunately, the, the wood has darkened. So it was painted once upon a time. But because the wood has darkened, you can't really see the pattern very well. But it's got just a beautiful... All of this is painted in this beautiful pattern. And then there's the inside of it. And there's the bottom. You can tell it's really old from looking at that felt. Brown felt. Interesting. A little chip. Uh, I paid $15 for that. And I wish I knew what it was. I've never seen anything like it. But I always buy weird things. Got a couple of brass belts. This one. That's a little waste, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little little tiny person belt. And This one kind of has a Native American look to it, style anyway. And just like that. These are, I think, probably 1960s, maybe early 1970s. And I paid $2.50 each for those, so I was happy with that. I got this trinket box. This is hand-painted porcelain. Nothing on the inside. But here has lots of information. It is a Limoges box, and it was made for Tiffany and Company. These are rather plentiful on uh, eBay and Etsy. I found quite a few of them. They seem to sell in the... I think I can get at least 30 think. And I paid $10 for it. So that's not too bad. 
Um, I'll just show you these real fast. These were um, just a, well, these two things I bought, bought for my husband because um, he's a bridge addict and he teaches bridge also. So I think that maybe his students might get a kick out of these things. This is a really old Culbertson new and complete summary and it's kind of like a cheat sheet of bridge. It's got a little index here and it's all the, you know, what the different bids mean and how to respond, defense bidding, takeout doubles, penalty, penalty doubles. However, I think because styles of playing change that a lot of the information's out of date. So it's just more of a curiosity, I think. And then this is called Bridget. And it's a game, it's where you can, two people can play bridge. And Rob and his mom play, they do um, practice hands. And so I thought maybe this would be fun for them. And it's still in its original wrapping. It's probably, uh, I'd say 1960s maybe. And then this last thing I bought was for me. This is a little book of pottery and porcelain marks. English, yeah, English pottery and porcelain marks. So, um, always useful to have those kind of things on hand. I paid three dollars a piece for those, so it's a little high. <sighs> Got some food dogs. These are, I think, carved cinnabar, maybe? Or, you know, faux cinnabar. Some kind of, it may be like a lacquer coating. It does have some chips, so it, I don't think it's pure lacquer. I'm not sure. I'll have to do some research on what this is, but I think I paid $3 for those guys. They're pretty cute. Uh, got some clip-on sunglasses. Um, probably overpaid for these. I paid $5 for them, but they're, they're really not that old. You know, as I got to looking at them a little closer, I don't think they're that old. But they come in a DKNY case. Dollar. You know, I can, I can probably sell those for maybe fifteen, maybe. I don't know. Um, this was a nice surprise. I got it off a uh, two-dollar table because it was silver plate, and I thought, oh, that's you know, kind of cute, shabby chic. <laughs> it's sterling. It's marked sterling on the bottom. Um, and I, you know, I don't think you're going to be able to see this. I know that mark. I can't think of what it is right now. It does, it is engraved with Marion. <laughs> um, I think um, somewhere in the $35 to $50 range. I, I looked at some others on Etsy and they were uh, for ones that had, you know, I think having the monogram is a, is a big drawback. But, um, you know, it is solid, sterling silver. What do you think? So I paid a couple bucks for that. Got this mid-century mosaic um, tray. Little, you could use it as a you know, little trinket tray, or you could serve some kind of food on that. Once I clean it, it's really filthy. Or um, I guess you could use it as an ash tray. These. Little square tiles were just all the rage in the 60s. Everybody was doing mosaics with them. I paid $4 for that. Got me a stork. I just thought he was adorable. I don't know that he's really old. He's got this thing that says, my name is Dennis. <laughs> and it's tied on with raffia. Uh, so possibly 1980s, but this also could have been added, so it could be older. When you look at the eyes, they look kind of old. I looked and looked and looked online, and I couldn't find another like him, so I have no clue. Looks like he's got an inventory number on his foot, but I just thought he was kind of cute. I may take this off to sell him if I can't figure out what it is or if it's something well-known. I don't think it is, though. I got another one of these shell coin purses. These always sell very well for me in the $15 to $20 range. 
And this one, it, it's not finished as nicely as some others I've seen, but I thought that the shell was especially pretty purple, the purple shell. So I'll probably price that at about 15 and I paid, um, uh, I think I paid $2 for that. Um, yeah, I paid $2 for the cup. Yeah, I think so. And then I got this um, lighter. It's still new in the box, a Ronson lighter. These, um, they don't sell for very much. It's got a leather cover on it. Never been used. Um, probably uh, 1960s or 70s. Uh, this was a premium that they gave away when you buy a 1000 series Ronson shaver. Got a free lighter. So somebody probably didn't smoke, so they didn't use the lighter. But anyway, that was a buck. Here is my what the heck is this entry for today. This is a wooden hand carved wall hanging. It's looks to be very, very old. It is Asian. Um, the guy who sold it to me had no clue. He had gotten it doing a garage clean out or something like that. And he said he even had a, an Asian expert friend look at it and he didn't really know what it was. But I just fell in love with it. I thought it was great. And it was $5.00. And then from that same dealer, I was quite interested in this little purple, or I guess it's, it's got purple and, well, I guess it's purple luster. Anyway, a pretty little plate, and it is marked JPL France on the back. I just thought it was really sweet, so he sold me that for five dollars and he threw in some freebies so i got this uh blue willow plate that has a fascinating mark on the back and you're not gonna be able to read it because i had a hard time reading it the only way i know what it says is because i found another similar plate that had a better mark on it online and it says Libertas, and it has a picture of an eagle, and it says trademark in Canada and U.S., and it says made in England. But I also found that this um, Libertas mark originally came from Prussia. So I'm kind of confused. But anyway, I think it's a pretty old... Um, Blue Willow Plate, and I think it'll sell for about $15, based on one I saw. That's just a guess. Um, and then I got also this little, this is just a little Japanese hand-painted trilobe, kind of a lotus plate. No marks on it or anything. Um, has kind of a luster finish on it. I don't know. He gave it to me for free because it's not his thing, and he was just getting rid of stuff, didn't want to pack it up. Uh, got myself a little dish towel with kitty cats on it. This is for me. I always pick up linen dish towels if I find them for a good price. And this one was a buck, I think. Uh, this is one of the coolest things I bought. This is a powder horn. It's missing the... Um, cap, I guess you'd call it, but look at the engraving. Isn't that just spectacular? That's just so Victorian, that little bird. And um, I have no idea what this is worth. I paid $8 for it. Um, I'm going to have to dig a little deeper. But I don't know. I'm thinking it could be fairly desirable. Got nice engraving on it. Uh, I got some more Florentine pieces. These ones are all, they all have the Florentia label on them. They're all from Florence, Italy. Just little wall plaques with 
paintings, well, you know, representations of paintings on them. Very Hollywood Regency. I paid $8 for the three of those. And uh, I could probably get 25 maybe, for the three of them. Maybe something like that. box. This is a turn wood. Um, nice wood. I think it might be walnut. Really pretty. But I like this because it's got that and it's got that. It's like two boxes stacked. There's the bottom. No marks. Got that for three dollars. A piece of Murano glass that's uh, so unusual. I've never seen a form like this before and even the inside is pretty it's got like little flecks of silver with controlled bubbles and there's the original label that's um, made in Italy Murano that's all it says so I paid 10 for that I got this um, tuning thing for tuning your instrument box and um, paid, I think I paid, it says three dollars, but I think I paid a dollar for that. Uh, I've sold those before. They sell, they don't sell for a whole lot. Um, picture frame, the Hollywood Regency. This is, uh, the brand is uh, Burns, I think, and I've sold those before too. It's a, it's a nice quality frame. It's got the glass. And the last thing I have to show you is, this is a song and service book for ship and field. It's the front of it. And it's mostly a hymn book, but it was published in 1942 for the Army and Navy. And it's just got uh, a lot of hymns, and then it's got things in it like how to conduct a military funeral, and um, it's got a, a Jewish service, and a Protestant service, and a Catholic, a Mass, Mass of Christ the King. And uh, I did find some of these online, and um, you know, I only paid a dollar or two for it, and uh, you know, I could make a little something on it. So, looking around, looking around, yep, that's it, that's it. Thanks for sticking with me. All these things are or soon will be for sale in my Etsy shop at vintagedazzle.etsy.com or a few may go on to eBay. Goodness, I've got the bread machine, the washing machine, and the traffic outside, sorry. Uh, uh, on eBay where my username is Kara Lennox. And please like and subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I will see you next time. Bye.